Here is my LEGO Technic Jeep Cherokee XJ. It's powered by the LEGO Powered Up system, with drive by two XL motors, steering by a large motor, and another L motor for shifting a four-speed gearbox, which can be tr controlled either manually or automatically. There's also an opening hood, and live axle suspension front and rear. Here you can see my controller. So I've got steering controlled here, drive controlled here, um, the speed readout there, the gear indicator over here, which can be controlled by the up and down arrows. This button here, which shifts from automatic to manual mode. And this button here, which, say I uh, shift up to force again, it just shifts the motor back to first and then stops the program to make sure it's always in the right spot when the program starts. Steering is controlled by this power function, or powered up large motor here through this rack with return to center steering through the programming. It's got, unfortunately, it's got, I think, positive positive caster angle, which isn't good, makes it lean, well, I don't know, it, it's the opposite of what normal cars want. So you can see it's very much leaning into the turn. The vehicle has four-wheel drive with two powered-up XL motors, with a differential in the front and just a basic gear in the rear. So it drives quite nicely. This is first gear right now. This powered-up L motor is in charge of shifting through these black double bevel gears here. And you can also see I've got a small stepper mechanism right there that just helps it snap into gear, makes it a bit more reliable. You may have noticed as I was shifting through the gears that the gears actually aren't in sequential order, so if I was controlling it Mechanically, the gears would probably, it would go, I don't know, first, third, second, fourth, or something. Which you obviously don't want, but thanks to the programming, I can program the motor to skip gears, and just to make sure it actually does them in the right order, even though it might have to go extra far, then go back a little, and so on. But it works quite nicely. I'll now try to demonstrate it driving in different gears. So we'll have first... First gear, shift to second, and third, and fourth. It's fairly zippy in fourth. There's also an automatic mode programmed into this vehicle. So if I press this button here, you'll notice the light in there turns from orange to green. That demonstrates that we're now in automatic mode. Um, Alright, let's so go back to manual. Shift down to first, then we'll start in automatic. So I'm going to start driving, and then because speeds are high, it's going to do an automatic upshift, and then another one, and then another one until it's going in fourth. So I've now got the truck into force gear automatic mode. I'm going to drive it forward into this rolled up mat here, and it's going to have to do some downshifts to get over it. So here we go. Oh, well, it just downshifted to third. It didn't have a very hard time, obviously. Now it's into first, so let's try it again. So now I'm just going to drive the truck down the room here, but I'm going to be showing you the phone so you can watch it, the speed readout. So here we go. And first, now it's going to shift up to second, 
up to third, up to fourth. Now it hits my mats, hit an obstacle. Now it shifts down to third, and it's struggling there. Down to second and down to first. And it's not really going to be able to do anything, but it's definitely doing its automatic shifting. This part of the video will probably only be of interest to those of you who've done some programming yourself with Technic, so you might want to skip it otherwise, but I just thought I'd try to show it. So, see that there? No, I'll just be brief. So this here is the one that it sets the variable A to equal either 1 or 0 as you press the button. So that's changing between manual and automatic modes. This one here is the one that Basically, it's used in judging for the automatic, how fast you're going. So it, first it waits for A to equal 1, implying you're in automatic mode. Then it sets variable C to equal the speed of the drive motors, the delay, does the same with D, and so on, all the way down the line to H here. And then we set variable omega to equal C plus D plus E plus F plus G plus H, all divided by 6. So it essentially takes the average speeds over a little more than a second, and then it sets omega to equal that. So then, um, if we go down here for the automatic shifting, you can see that when A equals 1, meaning it's automatic mode, and the variable b is greater than 1, so that's b is the speed in which you're in, so it's not, this one is only for upshifts, it's not going to downshift if it's lower than first. And the absolute value of omega is greater than 0 0.6, or the absolute value of 0 0.6 times the position of the, um, the controller, so if I have the controller at 100%, and the average speed it finds is less than six, than 60, as well as with other things. And also, also um, the controller has to be above 20%, or below negative 20%, because I don't want it shifting when I'm going really slow. Then it will set variable B to equal B minus 1. It'll lower the gear that way. Got a similar program here for upshifts. Instead of 0.6, it's 0.8. And then up here, I've got other programs that basically, depending on what B equals, it will rotate the motors to different absolute positionings. So B equals 1, B equals 2, B equals 3, B equals 4. Then I've got some other lines over here for the manual shifts, which are a lot simpler. You have to wait for it to be in manual mode, wait for you to press the button, the speed to be greater than 1, because this is for upshifts, and then it just or no, downshifts, I guess. And then it just lowers B. So maybe some of you can follow that, maybe not. Overall, I am pleased with this model. It only took me three days of work, and I think it looks alright and recognizable, and it's got a good amount of functions in its small space. It would have some pretty good off-road performance if it weren't for these motors sticking down at the front and rear. Well, that's not a motor, but it just doesn't have very good approach and de departure angles. But other than that, it's a fairly strong off-road performer, and I'm quite happy with the gearbox, which you could control very smoothly manually, or have a reasonably well-sorted automatic mode. I tried to make an automatic mode on my much larger, much more complex Ram TRX in the fall, but it, its drivetrain was just too much backlash after it, probably too many gears, and it just didn't want to drive much at all, so I never really got to enjoy an automatic. But this one here works pretty nicely, though. For performance, I would still use the manual.